creation, evolution, or something completely different. For millennia, humans have been trying to decipher their own roots. Many spectacular fossil finds have helped us trace the path of our species. Yet some pressing questions remain unanswered. Even more, the bizarre skull that recently surfaced in China has the potential to overthrow everything we think we know about the origin of mankind. Want to know why the mysterious Dragon Man has triggered a real research crisis? Then sit back, hit the like and subscribe button, and definitely stick around to the end. The Path of Humans Approximately 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens first saw the light of the earthly world. After our ancestors left the cradle of humanity in Africa, they eventually spread to other continents. Despite these fundamental insights, many questions remain open regarding human evolution, especially the exact path that modern humans have taken to their evolutionary completion remains a mystery. And although countless fossil finds have revealed important insights into the development of our species, researchers still owe us answers on the individual lifespan and the exact geographical distribution areas. Based on the current state of research, our story begins with the splitting of the last common ancestors of chimpanzees and humans. The entire line of descent, including extinct species and still living descendants, is referred to as homini. Within the homini species, researchers differentiate between various stages of development. The Australopithecines are considered pre-humans, followed by Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis as early humans. The other species of the Homo genus, apart from our own, are referred to as early humans, while Homo sapiens embodies modern humans. When modern humans first appeared on Earth, they still shared their world with several other species of Homo genus. However, traces of many of our former contemporaries have since vanished. They either became extinct, mixed with other species, or evolved further. One of the most significant developments driven by this process was the ability to make and use stone tools. However, Scientists are still divided over which genus and species first achieved this groundbreaking feat. As previously mentioned, existing historical evidence strongly suggests that Africa played a central role in the evolution of humanity. So far, so vague, because in fact, we cannot say where or when exactly the human success story began. It seems instead that our ancestors initially developed a certain isolation until climatic changes led them to leave their ancestral home and intermix with other species. Not just in terms of tool use, but also genetically. Against this backdrop, it should surprise no one that the analysis of DNA reveals more about the distribution and evolutionary history of humans than fossilized bones do. The oldest discovered genetic material of a human relative slumbered in Spain, in the so-called Sierra de Atapurica which goes by the nickname the Bone Pit. Experts traced countless tooth and bone remains from nearly 30 individuals. After the specialists managed to extract the staggering 430,000-year-old DNA, it became clear what type of bones they were dealing with. These are ancient remains of Neanderthals. The Hobbit People And even though we've found some significant puzzle pieces, that together form the picture of human evolution, one thing is undisputed. Our current knowledge is only set in stone until it's overturned by a novel discovery. Just think of the groundbreaking skull discovery that was recorded in the African village of Tong in the fall of 1924. Known in history as the Tong Child, the fossilized head at the time represented the oldest known fossil of a human ancestor. While the skull came from an individual about three to four years old that was killed by a bird of prey over 20 million years ago, the bone discovery mainly proved one thing. Charles Darwin was right. He had already proposed the thesis before the sensational discovery that the roots of our species lie in Africa. Until then, the majority of researchers had suspected that the cradle of humanity was in Asia. 
At this point, however, we should not forget that once creatures roamed our globe that we would normally locate in the fictional fantasy world. In 2003, the remains of a species were recovered in the Indonesian island of Flores, suggesting that the hobbits from the Lord of the Rings had a real-life template. Christened with the scientific name Homo floresiensis, the species of the Homo genus reached a body height of not more than 1 meter, approximately 3.3 feet. While the age of the fossils was initially estimated to be 18,000 years, researchers today believe that the hobbits lived at least 60,000 years ago. But no matter whether it's 18,000 or 60,000 years, this unique species disappeared several millennia ago into the obscurity of the past. Or did it? Well, if you follow the traditions of indigenous tribes, Homo floresiensis was still very much alive just 200 years ago. In fact, some experts see incredible overlaps between the officially extinct species and those fantastic beings the natives called Ebu Gogo. These were described as child-sized hairy people with noticeably long arms and a protruding belly. While the Ebu Gogo communicated among themselves in an unintelligible murmur, they cheerfully parroted what humans said to them. A groundbreaking discovery. Imagine the following. You are a simple worker, busy building a bridge under the watchful eyes of a foreign occupying power. But then, completely unexpectedly, your gaze catches something that doesn't seem to fit into the scene at all. An apparently ancient skull, half protruding from the riverbank. What do you do? Would you immediately tell the occupiers about your discovery? Or would you hide the skull in a safe place, only to reveal your secret on your deathbed? If the latter is the case, then you would have acted just like a Japanese worker in the early 1930s. After discovering the unusually long skull adorned with massive brow ridges, he stored it in an old well. Indeed, it wasn't until 2018 that he broke his silence about the remarkable incident. However, after the researchers learned about and examined the so-called Harbin skull, they found themselves in an absolute dilemma. How should one deal with a find that simply does not fit into the evolutionary history of humans? A recently published analysis revealed that the skull actually represents a previously unknown human species. It goes by the official designation Homo longi. However, in unofficial circles, it is also known as the Dragon Man. This does not mean that the species had a scale armor and could spit fire. It refers to the region where the skull was found. In detail, the name refers to the Helanjing province, where Long simply means dragon. The uncertain discovery history, unfortunately, did not allow scientists to uncover the exact find location, and therefore, the corresponding geological layer. Against this background, the experts had to use a different method for age determination. The so-called Uranium Thorium method showed that the Dragon Man lived at least 146,000 to 150,000 years ago. However, the unusual characteristics that the skull presents are overshadowed by some big question marks. It possesses both modern and ancient features. While the broad skull complete with its brow ridges fits perfectly into the early human schema, the small, flat, and deep cheekbones resemble those of a modern human moor. So what position does Homo longi occupy in the family tree of humanoids, and what is his relationship to us? Scientific Debate Now, these are questions to which scientists do not yet have clear answers. Even Sajini, who was responsible for the species and age determination, openly admitted that he had never come across such a specimen in his entire career. As unusual as he is, Homo longi also shows some parallels to other fossils in Asia from this time. In light of this, it is likely that the corresponding group is very closely related to our species. But that's not all. Some experts believe that the Homo longi is closer to us than the Neanderthal. But as so often, there is no scientific consensus in this case either. Even more so, the critics believe it is more likely that the Homo longi is closely related to the mysterious Denisovan man, which is why the classification as a separate species is simply wrong. 
However, this assessment also comes with a catch. The facts about the Denisovan man are extremely sparse. The scant tooth and bone finds only indicate that this species occurred in southern Siberia and in Tibet, and was closely related to Homo sapiens and the Neanderthal. But how do scientists today manage to insert a skull that had been around for hundreds of thousands of years into a higher-level family tree? While where human understanding reaches its limits, a supercomputer is needed. The experts fed the high-tech device with the characteristics of 95 fossil skulls, whereupon it created billions of phylogenic trees. These trees, in turn, show how the evolutionary relationships of different species are structured. And although Homo longi was given its own branch in the corresponding scheme, the path from there to modern humans is remarkably short. And with that, many thanks for watching our video to the end. Are you interested in regularly learning more about the most exciting discoveries from around the world? Then feel free to hit the like button and leave us a free subscription. And now we're interested in your opinion. What are your thoughts on the mysterious Harbin skull? Will we ever be able to fully trace human evolution?